Okay, so this is the lesson for 2.5, and this is actually pretty straightforward if you remember the standard graphs. And, and they're here on these notes, and so that'll hopefully help you, but we're just making some pretty straightforward changes to them. We call these transformations. In a transformation, uh, we're going to talk about sliding it left and right, up and down, maybe reflecting it, and then maybe making it vertically stretch, making it seem skinny and tall or wide and, and short. And we'll look at those as we go, but just to start out, the common graphs that are really common are constant functions. When an equation equals a constant number and there's no variables, it's going to be one of these horizontal lines. Uh, we have the identity, okay, which is the line y equals x, and that just means that it has a slope of 1, it goes through the origin. The next type that we have is uh, the quadratic, which y equals x squared. Again, f of x, remember, is exchange, interchangeable with y. So y equals x squared, and we have these two different uh, sides to it. There's the cubic, which is this sort of zigzag that goes through the, the center there. Um, we have a, the square root function, which you know it looks like a parabola on its side, but it's only half the parabola. So just kind of think about that motion there. And then the last one is the absolute value function, which is a nice V shape to it, okay? So these are our different standard shapes that we're going to be working with today. And our biggest focus is not in graphing them, but in moving them around. Um, that's sort of the focus of the assignment. So for instance, the line y equals x, now I'll use a pen, the line y equals x would traditionally look like this. But the line y equals x minus 4, the minus 4 is telling me that I have moved down four spaces. So you can talk about this point moving down four. You can also talk about this point moving down four. Every point on the line has been moved down four. But really we just focus on maybe the points on the axis. And pretty easy to work with. The next one we have the function is equal to the absolute value of x. Well the absolute value of x, remember, standard equation looks a lot like this. And how did this become that? Well everything was slid up three because of the plus three. You know that it's a vertical transformation when it's not in a grouping with x. If this was in parentheses with the x somehow, then we would know that this was a right-left slide. Um, but where this is a, outside of the parentheses, because there are none, and this is outside the, the absolute value, uh, that tells us these are vertical motions. Okay, Addition or subtraction to the end of an equation tells us vertical. Horizontal shift occurs when inside the parentheses there's addition or subtraction. Here we can see that x plus 3, the plus 3 is inside the grouping. Now whenever we're grouping with a variable like x, in order to transfer the information out, we always switch its sign. And the reason why is that this is actually written as x minus h quantity squared. So we say, what is it that we're subtracting? Well, subtracting a negative 3 would make it turn into a plus 3. So that's kind of the thought process behind here. We always switch it when we're talking about things grouped with our x. And because this is a negative 3 and it's with the x, which tells me left and right, I'm going to take the original function, which would be over here, and I'm going to shift it left three spaces. And if I do that, I'd create the new version of the equation, or new graph. We'd grab a different color. Here, you see, again, with the x, this is inside the square root with the x, you see the minus 4. Well, again, opposite of the negative 4 would be positive 4. And so that tells me to take the original graph, which would have been right about here, and move it four spaces to the right. And you can tell that that's been done. So these vertical and horizontal transformations, biggest issue is probably knowing when is it horizontal, when is it vertical, and then remembering that when it's horizontal, it's always the opposite of the sign. Um, there's two other, or two or three other types of uh, transformations we'll deal with. One of them is to reflect across the x-axis. If this is the original function and I want it to be upside down, the way I do that is by sticking a negative in front of the equation. Not with the x. I'm not putting it here with the x, I'm putting it in front of the whole thing. And so in front of the whole thing, we'll take this and it will flip it over the axis. Everything gets flipped over the x-axis, okay? And so you can find matching points the whole way down. So, you know, if, if y equals 
x squared. If I want that to be upside down, y equals negative x squared. That would flip it upside down. All right, then we have vertical stretching and shrinking. Think about, I, I actually like to think of this as making things fatter or, or skinnier. Um, and, and so they talk about stretching, and that's probably the, that is the correct term. But in terms of my brain, for whatever reason, it likes to think of them as, as being uh, fat or skinny. And we're just going to look at these three uh, equations here real quick. We're going to graph x squared. And if we graph that, well, well there's x squared. With it, now I want to graph below. I'm going to come down, and I want to graph 3x squared. By putting a number that's bigger than 1 in front of the function, the x squared, watch what happens. I get a very skinny or tall function. It's been stretched vertically, made taller more quickly. If I did the same thing, but I come down here and I do 0.5, or 0.2, rather, x squared, now, because it's less than 1, we're expecting it to do the opposite. And sure enough, this one becomes really wide and short. So short and fat. Um, that's how that... So these values here, if it's greater than 1, it's constant. Or if it's greater than 1, so if it is 1, then it's just a standard. If it's greater than 1, then that means it's going to go really tall, really fast. Okay, super quick. Here, if it's 0.2, which is less than 1, then it's going to be growing sideways faster than it grows up. Okay. The last type of transformation is when we reflect across the y-axis. Now, this is where, instead of letting y, the whole equation, be negative, we want to just focus on the x itself. So we're going to change the x from a positive x to a negative x. And so in order to answer that question, if you think about the square root function, you know, uh, if this was over here at 4, we know it would graph at 2. The problem with negative 4 was that uh, the square root of a negative is imaginary and we never graphed it before. But now the negative in front of x would turn that to a positive 4 and therefore I would get the point at 2. So it, it's literally reflecting across the y-axis. That should be enough to get you through uh, the homework. Come in and ask your questions, um, but hopefully that will get you going with what's going on in the background. Good luck.